Hey everybody, we're back. Wow, a whole lot of stuff has happened since we were last on the air. Brady's in Tampa, Mike Tyson came out of retirement, the NBA season was canceled and moved to Florida in a quarantine bubble, and rookies all across the NFL, they're showing out. We got lots of topics circling the sports stratosphere and we're going to get get to them. You're watching the new and improved Suffolk Sports Report. Hey guys, Lucky here from the Boston Celtics and you're about to watch the Suffolk Sports Report. Oh, that's a catch. Tatum drives down and throws it down. Pressure was saved by Raz on his belly. Way back it carries. And that ball is gone. Lots of NFL news during week two of the NFL season. A bad string of injuries across the league and the Patriots with a big game against the Raiders this Sunday. J.D. Conti's got you covered with the brand new segment, Conti Countdown to Kickoff. Thanks, Josh. I'm J.D. Conti, and welcome to the Conti Countdown to Kickoff. Before we talk about the next game down in Foxborough, let's take a look around the league. 2020 finally cut off to the NFL in Week 2, but surprisingly not in the form of COVID-19. Instead, teams around the league were ravaged with injuries at a level that's never been seen before. No team was safe. The 49ers lost four players during their contest against the New York Jets, including superstar defensive end Nick Boza. The 49ers' worst fears were confirmed when it was revealed Boza tore his ACL and will miss the remainder of the season. As the 49ers' problems couldn't get any worse, their MRI machine reportedly broke down. Their trip ironically began with a delayed flight as their plane reportedly crashed into the runway. Welcome to 2020, Niners fans. Along with Boza, Giants superstar running back Saquon Barkley also tore his ACL, crippling an already struggling Giants offense, led by new offensive coordinator Jason Garrett. Another superstar running back, the Panthers' Christian McCaffrey, suffered an ankle injury that will sideline him for approximately four to six weeks. With that injury, three out of the four ESPN top fantasy players for the season are out for multiple weeks, including the Saints' Michael Thomas, who is currently dealing with an ankle injury. With all the negatives I've just covered, this recap should hopefully make you laugh, unless you're a Falcons fan. Atlanta, honoring the 28-3 legacy, blew a 39-24 fourth quarter lead to the Dallas Cowboys on Sunday, after five of their players seemingly stood by and watched the Cowboys recover an onside kick in the final minute, which set quarterback Dak Prescott up to, for a game-winning drive. With that, let's shift the conversation down to Foxborough. The Patriots lost their final game of the season Sunday night to the Seahawks, 35-30. As disappointed as I was, I can't remember the last time I was so content with the Patriots' loss. They held their ground with one of the best teams in the league until losing on the final play of the game. Now, we can talk about the questionable play call on the last play all day, but I'm going to choose to focus on how well this team played, coaching aside. Cam Newton was astounding. While in week one, he showed off his legs as he rushed for two touchdowns, this week he showed that his MVP caliber arm is still very much alive as he passed for 397 yards. And that's with a receiving core that many like to sleep on, despite the fact Julian Edelman had a career high in receiving yards. We also saw the emergence of Damier Bird, who had six receptions for 72 yards, with a couple of them coming on third down. But what really got me going is the throws Cam made. They were Tom Brady throws. Third and 11, over the middle of Edmund, putting the ball in tight spots, reading the field and knowing exactly when to throw the receiver as he's about to make a cut. And you can't forget about that almost game-winning drive where he took the Patriots down to the goal line in crunch time, Tom Brady style. Given that and Cam's legs, I think if we give McDaniels and his receiving core a few more weeks to bond, we can see a Super Bowl caliber offense. Now, the Patriots' defense was not pretty. While they started off as well as you can with a pick six from Devin McCourty, they allowed five passing touchdowns to Russell Wilson. That will need to be better, especially with next week's game against the red-hot Las Vegas Raiders. Coach Belichick will need to adjust the count of the Raiders' star running back, Josh Jacobs, while accounting for their dynamic receiving core, and quarterback Derek Carr, who's on a mission to prove his haters wrong. Don't get me wrong, the Patriots are the better team here. We proved that against the Seahawks, and with that level of play, along with the Coach Belichick game plan, we'll be back above 500. That's it from this week's Conti Kick to Countdown to Kickoff. Back to you, Josh. That's all we have for you today on this week's edition of the Suffolk Sports Report. We'll see you guys next week.